Well, I'm with Tim Greenhow, the Chairman and Chief Creative Officer of Fitch. Tim, very nice to see you. Thanks very Hi. much, Steve, for joining us. Um, Tim, it was, I suppose, in the past pretty simple to construct and build a brand, but in today's environment, with lots of different touch points that consumers have in brands, mm. building strong, valuable brands is becoming much more complicated. Um, and it's not just the physical presence of that brand that's becoming more and more important. It's the experience that the consumer has. So how do you build brands around experiences today? I think, um, I mean, obviously, that's one of the things we're thinking a lot about at the moment, as you quite rightly say, um, because a shopping experience used to be a rather linear thing. You know, you would get up, you would walk to a store, you'd buy things and you would come home and you would then use those products. But I think you can, you know, everybody knows out there that the world has changed dramatically. In fact, there was a recent Harris report this year that said that 78% of millennials now are choosing to buy experiences over buying products. Now, I don't see that as a problem. What I do think it means is that what is the role of experience when I go shopping? I suppose, one the clock back a little bit. The experience you had when you walked into a store was the product on the shelf, mm. and I suppose then the luxury brands came along and built these sort of brand, mm. di- you know, brand emporiums. Um, what role is there within the retail environment, maybe even outside the retail environment now? Maybe even more important, of how do you actually create a a proper brand experience as opposed to yeah. the pack or the product in front so, of you? So, so I I think we need to go back to people and what they're looking for. And we've often talked about the fact that we think people have kind of four mind states when they shop. They are either dreaming, they're exploring, they're locating, or they're achieving. And I think when you think about that, I mean, the interesting things with a lot of brands these days is the experience happens more now after you've bought the product. If you shop with Nike, I can spend more time with Nike after I bought my running shoes looking at kind of the, uh, the fit apps that they have, the running apps, etc. So what you need to do is understand those experiences that people are looking for and then understand the best experience to deliver at that moment in the shopping journey. And so the other point I think I would, I would just raise on that is that we should also, and I'm stepping right back here, just go a bit deeper as well. Because I think our lives are defined by experiences. You know, There are personal experiences, things that happen to us that are deep and meaningful. There are shared experiences where we, with society, enjoy a moment. And then there are things where you might call bought experiences, where you choose to actively spend money. And we should just bear that in mind in terms of what role it plays in a person's life, as opposed to it just being a promotion, which is something quite different than a really good shopping experience. But when you construct now a a total experience for a brand, how do you define what that experience should be? consist of because there are many different routes into an experience Um, but obviously I suppose if each brand as its essence is different should have a very different essence of what the experience is going to be. Well I think you I think you make a good point I think as we have just said I think you start with the people you're trying to talk to but the other point is you then look at the brand what is unique how does that brand behave what is the what is their what we call signature experience and I think the way to look at that in our view would be to to not just always assume that experiences in the 21st century are digital. We see them made up of, there'll be a physical experience, there'll be a digital experience, but in the heart of it, our view is that there's a human experience as well. And so we look at brands to see what they currently have that they can now utilize, that help people dream, explore, locate, and then work out whether this is best manifested as a physical thing, so it's a store or a a pop-up, whether this is a digital interaction or whether this is simply just a change in the way that a brand might service a consumer in the future. Many people are saying, rightly or wrongly, um, that the physical experience that people now have in the store is outdated. (laughs) Um, Maybe stores won't exist in uh, 10 years' time. What's your view on that? Um, Stores might not exist in the future. But I don't mean that. I think what I mean by that is that what we used to call shops will not be what we recognize in the future as physical spaces. Shopping, retail, is part of the fabric of society. We still, as human beings, enjoy going out and spending time in other environments with other people. But stores may not be the ultimate place where you buy something, and I'm not suggesting that we're just all going to showrooming, but I do think that a shop that just behaves as a shop will no longer be sustainable. It needs to be doing other things. It needs to be giving you the experience, the actual physical manifest experience that you can get from that brand. And and what's the balance going to be between an experience that you get 
when you go into a physical store versus an experience in a pop-up environment, in a location that uh, you happen to be passing through, in a location where maybe there's a sports event going on. Mm. I don't think in the future that we're going to be able to see the difference. I think that we're going to find that actually my experience online is very similar to my experience with a pop-up, is very similar to my experience in what used to be called a store. Uh, because actually the experience will become the way you interact with that brand in many different ways through many different media. So if you were to give one piece of advice to uh, <laughs> the brands on the top 100 most valuable uh, global brands for 2016 yeah. as to what it is they need to do in order to enhance the experiential part of their brand proposition, what would that be? Um, I think it's a couple of things. I think that... Um, if you are a brand that has a digital proponent to your offer as well as a physical proponent, I would think very carefully about how, how, you, how you build that brand in a beta way. The idea that retail is going to be in a constant state of beta for us is a very interesting thought. The idea that stores are no longer just permanent, they can change very quickly. So, so the concept of, you know, you had a store blueprint and you Absolutely. roll that blueprint out, you know, for the next five or six years, you think that's dead. And then five you? years later, you order some more wallpaper. <laughs> I think that's changing now. I think people want to see change on a regular basis. And I think we have now... So, so part of the experience is change. Yes, absolutely. So I think that would be my first piece of advice. And I think my second piece of advice would be to, to actually not dismiss the physical, but to understand how the physical and your format strategy, if there is such a thing these days, how that fits into the overall mix of somebody enjoying and achieving something with you as a consumer. There are a few purely digital brands that have suddenly mm -hmm. realized that they want a physical presence. Why do you think that is? It's a hard one, that. I think, um, I think that goes back to my earlier point. I think that, of course, you can have a great relationship with a brand if it's just purely online or digital. But I do still think that people crave interactions and actually human interactions. And so I'm, I'm, I'm interested in looking at where that's going. You know, we're seeing that Amazon are trying out stores both in Seattle and I think in Asia at the moment, which, which we would have called in the past a bookstore. But it'd be interesting to see what they do. Is it a bookstore or is it something quite different? Is it more of an event? Is it more of an exhibition? Is it more of a, an experience? Uh, but I think they're doing it, as I said, because, they, because I think humans essentially crave interactions. So when we see the new genre of shopping centres, which we're beginning to, um, they're beginning to emerge now, mm -hmm. where it really is a mix of uh, retail space, entertainment space, food and beverage space, and a really intriguing mix of people who've taken retail space who you wouldn't normally think were associated with more than people mm. like uh, car showroom Tesla, world, Tesla yeah. popping up all over um, premium uh, uh, shopping center retail space. Mm. What do you think the future of those big emporiums of uh, shopping malls uh, are going to be in, I suppose, your frame of experiential uh, environments? Um, it, you're right in saying it has changed dramatically. In the same way I said before that shopping used to be rather linear, shopping centers, were, you know, you went to the fashion bit or you went to the food court or you went to the bit that sold technology. I'm starting to wonder now whether in the future shopping centers are going to need, need to curate the overall experience and actually find ways in which the various brands and retailers might start working together. In the same way, what used to happen in the food court was lots of food retailers working together with shared seating, etc., Maybe now the retailers and the brands now start to work together so that the overall shopping center is as a, an experience as the individual parts within it. So what, what's the difference, Tim, between buying and achieving? Um, they're essentially the same thing these days because I think consumers are more demanding. You know, they expect a great product, but they also expect a brand that can also help them do things better, progress, move forward. So um, I think they are very much the same thing. Um, but I think what's interesting for consumers to understand is how that brand delivers that to you, whether it's through the product itself, whether it's through the fact that you become a member of that brand or that retailer, and all the benefits you get from that. Many brands now are finding that uh, consumers are narrowing down the shortlist, um, and it's becoming more and more difficult uh, to get on the consumer's mm. consideration list. Um, in that sort of non-linear path to purchase now, that sort of 
starts somewhere, goes anywhere, yeah. and doesn't even end when you bought when you yeah. bought the product. Um, in that sort of experiential sort of economy, again, what advice would you give for the brands to help them uh, get onto uh, the consideration? Well, we've list we've today? we've coined a new phrase really, which is whether you're a baby boomer, Gen Gen X, Gen Y, or Gen Z. Um, we are now generation picky. <laughs> we we just demand so much more. That sounds like people. my mother. <laughs> yes, right. it sounds like me. It sounds like my kids. I mean, we are just generation picky. I'll give you a very good example. You know, it used to be that we could stand on the street and in the pouring rain, holding our hand out, hoping a yellow light might go back for a taxi. And now we have Uber, and we just do it. We can stand in the dry. But even when we order an Uber and we're looking where he's going to get to, we kind of go, "Why did he go that way?" So this thing that's become completely simple. My point being, I think, is that we understand the concept of user experience. And so I think that anybody that provides the best user experience, whether it be physically, digitally, or in a human way, are the brands that are going to win, I think, because it should feel easy and it should be rewarding. And those are the two words I think I'd like people to remember, is that all retail and brand experiences in the future should be rewarding and easy. Finally, Tim, um, in that uh, journey you talk about there, um, what role is there for the whole notion of sort of taking away friction and being frictionless? And is uh, the frictionless journey the journey that's ultimately going to be uh, the most rewarding for consumers, uh, for today's picky consumers, as you say? Yeah, um, I think so. I mean, I think uh, frictionless is hard to achieve, um, but I think one way to get to the frictionless is that there should be no step backwards. Um, it's almost like the one login concept. So once I've logged into you as a brand, I should be able to keep moving forward. Now, it may not be frictionless, because I think that is very difficult to achieve, but it should always be a sense of progressing forward and building on the previous experience I've had with you, rather than having to go back to the beginning and start again. Tim Greenhow, Chairman of Fitch and Chief Creative Officer, thanks very much, Steve, for joining us. Thanks.